Congress clashes over a bill to help those out of work, all while Floridians are forced to live on $275 a week. The sharper insight on why that could actually cost the state more in the long run. The president praising our state for its work to slow the spread of COVID-19. But are we actually getting better? Why Pinellas is actually the poster child for progress. And how masks could eventually boost immunity to the virus. That's next on 10 Tampa Bay. Wake up on the bright side. Morning starting at 430 on 10 Tampa Bay. Florida hits its lowest number of positives since June. Another reason to see masks as a mini vaccine. We're breaking down the science for you next on 10 Tampa Bay. Isaias is a hurricane once again. We just got the 11 o'clock advisory, and tonight it's approaching landfall in the Carolinas. We'll give you an update coming up. Plus, negotiations picked back up today on a new stimulus bill, but nothing to show for it. Now, there's a chance the president might step in to help get something done. So glad you're up late with us on this night side. I am Ryan Bass. Carolina is back as well. We're going to see her in a little bit. She's going to update you on the progress of those potential stimulus checks. But we start with some positive signs in Florida's coronavirus numbers. The state reported 4,752 new COVID-19 cases this morning, the fewest of any day since June 23rd. But only 60,000 tests came back yesterday. We've been averaging more than 100,000 per day over the last two weeks. So that's a significant drop. Today's numbers, they certainly look like an outlier, a 50% decline from two days ago in cases. We've asked the state if that's due to state-run testing sites on Florida's East Coast being closed due to the storm this weekend, but we have yet to hear back from the state. Now, the good news is even with that drop in total tests, our percent positive did not increase. The state reported 9% of our tests were positive. That is now back-to-back -back days under 10%. The first time we've seen that since mid-June. Our average there continues to slide, but still is above 10%. And a quick note on testing, by the way. Today, our governor announced two sites in Miami-Dade will begin giving tests that get results in 15 minutes to people with symptoms and those older than 65. No word yet if those will be coming to other sites, including us, around the state as well. Now, back to today's numbers. The state reported 73 more Floridians have passed away due to this virus. One of those, a 17-year-old man in Manatee County. That is the youngest person to die from the virus in that county. Our average is now 149 deaths per day in Florida over the last two weeks. As for who's currently being cared for in the hospital with this virus, look at that red line. It's dropping, which is the state as a whole, under 8,000 hospitalized right now. Tampa Bay, the gold line, has less than 1,500. So we seem to be doing better overall, something President Trump has taken note of, pointing to Florida, Arizona, and Texas as some hotspots that are showing improvement. We're beginning to see evidence of significant progress. Nationwide, the number of positive cases has declined by nearly 6% from the week before, and the positive test rate has also dropped. The virus is receding. In hotspots across the South and West, we've seen slow improvements. In Florida, 21.2 percent drop. So that's a tremendous uh, job that they're all doing. Yes, our case numbers are trending down, but we have still seen the most cases of any state in the last seven days, over 63,000. We've got a ways to go to stop this spread. But as 10 Tampa Bay's Angelina Salcedo shows you, one Bay Area county actually seems to be doing something right. St. Pete Mary Christman has been very happy with the results he's seen. And again, remember, it takes that sustained change to really make a dent in this pandemic. Dr. Wolfson says we're going to need the percent of positive tests below 5% for a good six to 10 weeks across the state before we can say that Florida has flattened the curve. And even when we get to that point, it's going to require you to start acting responsibly if we want to stay flat. That's the sharper insight. Dr. Anthony Fauci is sharing with us tonight. What's in our hands, Howard, I've said that so many times, you have the dynamics of the virus, if left to its own devices, is going to keep resurging. The only way we can stop it, by what we do as a countermeasure against it, by trying to prevent that. And it can be done. It's not inevitable that you're going to see these surgences, if in fact you handle it properly. 
Now, guys, if you want the latest on the virus, just text FACTS to 727-577-8522, and you'll get a link with all of our coverage and everything you need to know right to your phone. Now, this pandemic, it seems like it's going to be hanging around through hurricane season. Florida just avoided landfall from Hurricane Isai, yes, but it looks like the Carolinas won't be as lucky. This is a live look right now at Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, where they're starting to feel the impacts of Isai yes, tonight. You can see kind of the surf kicking up in the background, those palm trees swaying there. I want to bring in Chief Neurologist Bobby Deskins now. And Bobby, this thing really just strengthened into a hurricane again. Yeah, it did. 85 mile per hour winds right now. Myrtle Beach now is on the back side of this thing. So the wind has switched and is coming offshore from northwest to south and east. But man, Wilmington, Wrightsville Beach, Figure Eight Island, all the way up Swansboro. Everybody's seeing some very heavy winds and rain right now. Look at the numbers, guys. As of 11 o'clock, it has 85 mile per hour winds. That's hurricane strength. So it jumped up. Last time we talked, it was about 70. Hurricane force winds only extend about 25 miles out from the center. So that's that main core that you see rotating around it. The tropical storm force winds, however, they go out 125 miles from it. So that's what's happening. Now, as this moves on shore, it's going to be right near Oak Island. That's probably where they'll end up giving it the landfall tonight and then moving up west of Wilmington. The winds will spread out as it weakens, and that means tropical storm force winds for most of this area. Track right now takes it to Norfolk by tomorrow morning with 70 mile per hour winds. It's a little bit stronger than originally forecast, and then eventually over New York tomorrow afternoon, west of Boston, and then into Canada by Wednesday morning. Our weather's been quiet, but we do have some rain in the forecast. I'll talk about that coming up. Seems like that thing will be going over DC as well. Speaking of, that's where lawmakers are reportedly moving closer to a deal on a new coronavirus relief bill. But then again, they've been flirting with this relief package for what seems like a while now. My co-anchor Carolina Lee back with us and is here tonight. Congress is still far apart. Carolina, now President Trump is thinking of stepping in. What's the latest here? All right, so here's the deal, Ryan. Both sides are scrambling to get a deal on coronavirus relief done, knowing that Americans are waiting for this. Sources tell CBS News the White House wants lawmakers to reach a deal, but they're advising the president to consider taking executive action here. The federal enhancement unemployment benefits and the ban on evictions both expired nationally. Democrats want to keep the extra $600 weekly unemployment payment, while Republicans want to slash those payments to $200 weekly. They've discussed short-term extensions, but so far, no deal. So the president is weighing his options. He might prevent evictions through executive action, and then also... Yeah, I can do that if I want, and I want to do that. I don't want people to be evicted. We're having a very good discussion with Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer. The problem is they want to do bailouts of their various Democrat-run states and cities. Right now, the Senate is scheduled to go on a month long recess after this week. But some members are saying, wait a minute. No, 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 that's not going to fly here. We need to get working on this. Make sure that deal is done to make sure Americans get what they need here. Yeah, but Carolina, until they come to terms, unemployed Floridians, they're going to have to learn how to live on two hundred and seventy five dollars a week or even less if you're self-employed or a contract worker. And as some state lawmakers tell 10 Tampa Bay's Josh Sidorowicz, this delay could wind up costing our state and our economy a lot more in the long run. And a lot of Floridians and a lot of people in this country agree with her. You know, if you're wondering if the state might consider increasing its cap on benefits, the governor has repeatedly said that's on the legislature to take care of. And for those of you struggling in Hillsborough County, do remember there is actually a fund to help people make housing and utility payments. You can find that on the county's website. Well, we know masks can protect you by keeping the virus from getting out. But can what they let in also keep you safe? That's next. Side by side, across, and in circles, the lines forming our 10 connect. Connect you to your community. Connect you to the challenges you face every day. Lines that take you beyond the surface, giving you sharper insights into the issues shaping your world. These lines shape our 10, but most importantly, they shape who we are at 10 Tampa Bay. How cool is the 10 Tampa Bay app? Show us what's going on where you live with the Near Me feature. Upload your pics, your videos, and boom, we get them, we share them. 
Download the 10 Tampa Bay app with the Near Me feature today. There's a lot going on in your world. Sometimes clarity is hard to come by. Don't just watch the news, understand it. This is 10 Tampa Bay. You know, whether you like them or not, the science shows masks are effective in slowing the spread of COVID-19, but the emphasis has mostly been on how wearing a mask protects others. Now a local doctor says new research shows masks do more to protect you than you originally thought, not just for what they keep out, but for what they could be allowing in. Now doctors say there is also evolving evidence on face shields that suggest they might be as good as masks for the person wearing them, but it's still unclear how well they stop an infected person from spreading that virus. I want to check back in with Chief Neurologist Bobby Deskins again now. Bobby, Isaiah is currently looking stronger, as you talked about earlier in the show, as it approaches landfall there in the Carolinas. Yeah, uh, just about right now making landfall. And landfall, by the way, is the very center of the eye feature, right where the low would be. And so that's why I say just about, because the northern eye wall is already on land in what's called Brunswick County in southeastern North Carolina. It's now 40 miles south-southwest of Wilmington, North Carolina. It's going to go right up on the west side of the Cape Fear River from them. 85 mile per hour winds. 85, guys. This thing really, I mean, look at the shape. Looks a lot better now. Those highest winds going through Wrightsville Beach, Wilmington, Figure Eight Island, all those areas up in the Pender County right now. Yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty rough right now. But now that it's moving on land, it will slowly dissipate as it moves off towards the north and the northeast. But look at this. I mean, there's a lot of rain out ahead of us. That looks like a hurricane, right? When it was coming by east of Florida, it did not look anything like that. The wind shear that was pushing it away, or at least the storms on the west side when it went by Florida, is now pushing from behind. So there's actually less wind shear. The speed's moving up. This thing's moving to the north, northeast at 22 miles per hour. That's one little silver lining. It's not going to last any amount of time, really, in any location. Tomorrow morning, it's already over Norfolk. By tomorrow afternoon, it's already past New York City. So, and then it'll continue up into, at, uh, excuse me, eastern parts of Canada. They're talking right over Burlington, Vermont as well by tomorrow night. Now, the hurricane warnings right there near the center. Again, that's where the highest winds are and they should start to come down. But as those winds come down, they will spread out. And that means widespread tropical storm force winds for Eastern Carolina, Virginia, Maryland, the Delmarva, even winds 45, 55 miles per hour sustained for New York tomorrow. Here's a forecast for the Carolinas where the highest winds are. And you can see 30s and 40s sustained. That's through four in the morning. And then notice Newport News, Virginia Beach, Norfolk area, sustained winds well in the 30s, perhaps even in the 40s, right at the beach with gusts 15, 20 miles per hour higher than that. So things will calm down quickly for the folks that have it right now, but it's going to be moving up the, co the coast. This area shaded here in the middle is the best chance to see any tropical storm force winds. And you can see it's hugging the coast. The problem with it hugging the coast is it's not fully over land, so it's not going to fall apart as quickly. And that's why winds are expected to stay up. For the most part, keep an eye on this little system here. 40 to 50 percent chance. Just going to kind of linger around here between southwest Bermuda. I, I don't think it does much. I'm not worried about this. Don't worry about it. And then the extended forecast is actually even better news because next week and a half, almost two weeks, we're not seeing much on the models, which is really good news. I mean, this is the GFS model. European about a week out is trying to put something there, but that is just about it. So I'm not worried about Tropics at this point, we will keep an eye on it, of course, as we get going into the next couple of days. Let's talk local real fast. It was warm out there today. It is going to be warm out there tomorrow. It's, all, it's still 85 degrees. It feels like the low 90s. You can see most areas are in the 80s. Rain, we only saw a couple of showers. Tomorrow morning, if you do get up early, watch for a couple of showers right along the immediate coast. And then what's happening is that they're going to push inland as we go through the day. So things are going to start to develop. I think rain chance is quiet tonight. But notice 20% tomorrow morning, and here's what it looks like on the forecast model. Watch this by 8 o'clock. See them right here? And then watch they kind of drift inland slowly. Lunchtime, Tampa is the best chance for rain. And then watch how they really start pushing inland into the afternoon hours. Let's jump over to Weather 2, guys, for your seven-day forecast. I only put rain chance at about 30% for tomorrow, but we will have slightly better chances on Wednesday and then Thursday and Friday. It's those afternoon showers and thunderstorms, good 60 to 70% each afternoon. And, yeah, it stays hot. Happy 43rd birthday, Tom. 
What better present than throwing the football to me? You're welcome, baby. Happy birthday. Enjoy your day. See you on the field. What do you get a guy that's got everything, including Jeter's house? How about a lightning playoff victory? Happy 43rd birthday, Tom Brady. You're watching 10 Tampa Bay. I uh, sharing a few, uh, one reason to smile. We're not gonna give you a few, we're gonna give you one. So here's a moment of calm that happened during this weekend storms. This turtle hatchling made its way back to water just before Isaias approached Vero Beach in that storm. Turtle hatching season, by the way. Look at that little guy. It runs through October. By the way, National Hurricane Center saying Isaias has made landfall in the Carolinas. You can follow the radar on 10tampabay.com. We'll see you back here tomorrow, guys, for Nightside. Have a good one. It's important to know all the facts about the coronavirus pandemic. That's why 10 Tampa Bay keeps you up to date on every new development, taking you beyond the surface. From testing to the positivity rates and hospitalizations, we're tracking the virus here in Tampa Bay and across Florida, helping you understand the crisis so you're informed, prepared, and connected as we battle this coronavirus together. Trust 10 Tampa Bay for information that takes you beyond the headlines. Any station can tell you the who, what, where, and when of a story. That's the easy part. You see, what drives us here at 10 Tampa Bay is the why. Every single day. We know that peeling back the layers of the story shows how it affects your life. It gives meaning and context to what's going on. A lot of things compete for your attention. Information is coming at you quicker than ever before. And that's why we're here. Don't just watch the news. Understand it. That's 10 Tampa Bay.